Hello, everyone. My name is Rob ross Manneth, and I'm the park biologist at Jonathan Dickinson State Park in Southeast Florida. And today I'm going to be talking to you uh, about Florida scrub jays, fire, and bandits. And uh, this is a conservation success story that we've been working on for a few years. All right. Okay, there we go. Um, so where's Jonathan Dickinson State Park? Um, we are in Southeast Florida in the slide on the map at the bottom right. Uh, you can see uh, the location. Uh, we're just north of the city of West Palm Beach. Uh, and uh, the bigger map, you can see we're here in yellow and uh, these red areas are urban areas. Uh, we're about 10,500 acres, so relatively small, uh, but we're connected uh, to the west uh, all the way to Lake Okeechobee, uh, which is a large body of water uh, via another 150,000 acres of public land of uh, uh, locally owned land, so municipalities, counties, uh, state, federal lands, all, all, all kinds of different uh, public landowners. And uh, we have about 200,000 visitors per year. So a lot of folks from West Palm, Fort Lauderdale, Miami come and recreate up here. So we're very visible. And uh, one of our, our inhabitants is the Florida scrub jay, which uh, has uh, relatives, uh, similar looking birds in the Western United States. Um, it, but the Florida scrub jay is unique. It's got some unique biology. Uh, it is very territorial. It works in family groups. Uh, and as you can see on the map here. Uh, this is a distribution of of the birds in Florida that uh, Florida scrub jays are are distributed not evenly. Uh, their habitat, their the ecosystem that they inhabit is Florida scrub and uh, basically high dry um, so higher elevation areas that are distributed unevenly. And uh, you've got Ocala National Forest to the north. That's kind of their big stronghold. Uh, so that's a public property. You've got Lake Wales Ridge in the middle of the state. This is Lake Okeechobee we talked about before. Uh, then you've got some scrub in Southwest Florida. And then along the East Coast, the Atlantic Coastal Ridge which towards the bottom, uh, the, you know, those blue dots are uh, occurrences of the bird. Uh, towards the bottom, the, the southern end of that map is uh, Jonathan Dickinson State Park. And uh, so what, you know, why do we care about Florida scrub jays? They're uh, federally threatened. Uh, they've declined significantly over the past 100, 150 years for a variety of reasons. Uh, and, and one of those, as you can see, you know, the East Coast is uh, very much populated. Um, uh, so habitat destruction is definitely a, an issue. Um, there are other issues as well. And uh, I guess the, the way that I kind of describe this uh, is that they, the Florida scrub jays are a Goldilocks species. Uh, they don't, they don't like the, their, their habitat, the Florida scrub uh, or, or uh, scrubby flatwoods that you see here, they don't like it very low, uh, like right after a, pres a prescribed burn or wildfire. Um, they don't like it real tall, thick, uh, where they can't get around. Um, so they don't like it too high. They don't like it too low. They don't like it just right. So this is a picture of some optimal scrub jay habitat. And um, the, the dominant plant is any one of uh, four different 
scrub oaks in the background here, um, uh, which you can see uh, the scrub jays got an acorn uh, that uh, they will uh, use as food, especially in the winter time. Um, so fire kind of keeps uh, this these oaks kind of uh, in check, not too high. Um, and uh, fire also creates these open sandy patches, which is great for scrub jays. Uh, it also uh, eliminates some of the trees in the background uh, where predators can hang out and pick off scrub jays. Uh, and uh, there's a couple reasons that the scrub jays love these open sandy patches, which fire creates. They like to cache the acorns in there. They also like to nest in the scrub oaks, uh, kind of at chest height, you know, plus or minus. Um, and with the sandy patches, they can see predators coming to the nest that are trying to steal eggs or, uh, or nestlings that can't fly off yet. So in Jonathan Dickinson State Park, and you know, remember the 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 point of the this talk is that we've got a big conservation success. Um, is so in the early '90s we had lots and lots of birds, as many as 300, and then we had a big crash uh, somewhere around you know 10 years later, um, and then uh, we started doing surveys, formal surveys, and the uh, mid 2000s, 2007, found 35 birds in, in all of our scrub, in our 3,000 acres of scrub and scrubby flatwoods. So we had a big crash and we're going to talk about why that happened. Uh, mainly it's a lack of, uh, of fire for uh, about 20 years in the scrub. And uh, so, you know, the goal is to return this number back to uh, that, that higher number 300. Um, just going back to this map here, um, so the 3,000 acres of scrub and scrubby flowers are mainly in the eastern part of the park. See a little bit of sand here. This is a primary dune, a secondary dune. You can see that really well. And then this tertiary dune. So you're going kind of from a uh, high elevation, which is only maybe uh, 87 feet above sea level uh, to maybe 20 or 30 feet and then 15 feet above sea level here. And then the rest of the park isn't necessarily suitable for scrub jays. There's other things that, that occur there, but uh, not scrub jays. Uh, so we have a potential for anywhere between 50 and 100 groups. Uh, those groups will have anywhere from uh, one uh, to uh, maybe as many as eight birds, uh, typically more like uh, two to six birds. Uh, they're very territorial. And uh, we know that the population crashed because of a lack of prescribed fire or, or uh, any type of fire in, in that scrub, those 3,000 acres in this 20 year period of 82 to 2000. So by 2007, we had started burning again, but uh, because the landscape around the park was so urban and then agricultural, there were no places for birds to come into uh, the park and uh, uh, reoccupy those territories. So uh, we had to uh, grow, grow our own birds essentially. And uh, just kind of taking a side trip to what fire looks like um, in this ecosystem. So I'm gonna focus on this bottom right picture. Um, so this is an area that last burned in 1971. Uh, this picture was taken in 2014 when this prescribed burn happened. And uh, after 40 years of fire suppression, uh, you know, the, the sand pines, that's what these trees are, uh, you know, they're burning uh, pretty hot. They're, they're torching out, um, you know, it's, it's, pretty difficult to manage this type of fire uh, just because of, of how it's burning. And so I'm going to go over to this bottom left picture. So if you can see the cursor right here is where that picture was taken. 
uh, right over here in the bottom right. Um, so basically, you know, how do you manage that fire? Well, the same way that we manage this other fire you see pictures of is that we set it up for success. We always burn uh, into recent fresh black. Um, and uh, that's what we were doing with this burn here is setting up this 1971 fire. Um, and and we, we pulled it off successfully. You can see as well, you know, we've got a structure here. Um, there's also US-1, intercoastal, uh, and some uh, some very expensive homes uh, on Jupiter Island and then the ocean. That kind of gives you an idea of what we're what we're looking at. But that is one reason why uh, folks didn't burn that scrub. You can see right after that burn uh, from 2014. Uh, you know, very high consumption here. Again, Goldilocks uh, uh, scrub jay. Uh, won't like this area for at least a few few more years after this burn, um, but but they will return and have returned to that area. So uh, this is what my one real uh, data heavy slide. I've got uh, time, so we kept records from the 70s to the present, acres uh, burned on the left and birds uh, on the right. There's a lot to talk about here, um, but uh, the kind of couple of main things is, uh, you know, we had the big 1971 wildfire, the 82 scrub wildfire. Uh, we don't have numbers of scrub jays, although, you know, the number would be way up off of the screen in the 300s. Um, if that, that 300 number is right. We started taking numbers, uh, doing uh, 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 park-wide surveys in 2007. And uh, the, the big thing to take home is, you know, again, we had an increase, maybe due to some prescribed burning, uh, another little bit of a crash, and then uh, because of consistent prescribed burning, and that's a that blue line, including in the scrub, uh, we had a big increase uh, in the past five years. This is a huge success, um, and it's it's taken us a long, long time uh, to to get to this point. And we we just want to share that with with folks that um, you know you put your nose to the grindstone, eventually good things will happen with uh, with scrub jays. And the, the, one, the one other thing that I haven't talked about is um, the, uh, uh, the bandit portion of the, the title of the talk. And um, again, this is, uh, so in 2006, um, we had a prescribed fire that, uh, that, that, that burned outside of its box. Um, we actually had that in 2006. And then in 82 as well. Uh, but this was, was called this wildfire, the bandit fire. Got a local, uh, the, uh, the local celebrity is, is Burt Reynolds. Um, he lived uh, very close to the park. And um, with this, this wildfire, um, it, it was called the bandit fire. So that, that's where that comes in. But uh, we didn't stop burning scrub because of that. It was a there's a mistake. Uh, we learned from it, uh, but we continued on the path of burning. Um, and uh, finally, we're kind of on that other side now um, with almost 100 scrub jays. We'll have them hopefully next year. And then uh, just another visual here. This is uh, from Hope Mountain Tower, the highest natural point in South Florida. You can see between this 1995 picture, 2005, we had a couple, three hurricanes, uh, but we also burned in here, uh, resetting uh, the structure here, and then uh, did another burn, at least, a, at least one other burn, um, and then by 2015, it's more like the optimal uh, habitat that you would expect uh, for Florida scrub jays. You can see 
you know, the landscape in this picture versus over here, it's very, very dense uh, sand pines. Uh, and this is just a picture of Curtis's milkweed. It's another state listed plant. So what's good for Florida scrub jays is good for a lot of other plants and animals. Um, and this is one uh, pretty example of, uh, of a fire dependent species other than Florida scrub jays. And I just kind of want to end on, uh, you know, kind of the bigger picture here. We are part of a landscape of publicly owned lands. Um, and the idea here is, uh, again, we've seen the success uh, in terms of numbers. Um, we're at just shy of 90 birds, but the goal is to build this population up so these other smaller properties uh, will, uh, who, who, are, who are doing what they need to do, doing uh, prescribed burning, habitat management, uh, that these birds will uh, then uh, uh, distribute themselves uh, in this larger area. So you can he see here to the south, there's some smaller properties that are and could be good for scrub jays, but they don't have them. And um, yeah, we, we will hope that success will continue uh, over the next 5, 10, and 15 years.